If you're like me and you've been watching the goings on within the games industry every day, like a sugar addict eyeballing the last bear claw on the pastry rack, you'll have been devouring the apocalyptic proclamations surrounding the epic game store like a fifth century doomsayer who's run out of material. Right to us! Good morning. I have been itching to talk about this, uh, this being the the Epic Game Store, uh, and I get the fret and the negativity. I get the bummer that uh, that is barring games behind a uh, a weaker and objectively more anemic service. Uh, but um, I'm just I'm generally pissed though before all of this, any of this <laughs> even happened. I'm angry that I can't get physical games for PC anymore. Uh, when was the last time you were in a video game store and the physical PC offerings on the shelf were more robust than the beer selection at Uncle Earl's pool party? We got both, Bud and Bud Light. You know, you see you see all of the uh, the, the usual suspects, uh, if if any, on the uh, on the shelves in a video game section at like Target or Walmart or anything. You see StarCraft, Diablo, decades old accounting software and some junky old uh, poker game. If you're lucky, that's if you're lucky. I already dislike what Steam has generally done to the act of purchasing a game uh, these days. Buying a game today has about as much ritual as consuming music and movies do. Those things have just been kind of uh, completely and totally devalued. Uh, in that there is virtually none, no uh, no ritual in buying a uh, game anymore. You don't you don't get your map, you don't get your your cool box art, a thing to actually hold on to and to control as a consumer. Disc cases anymore. Don't even have discs in them. <laughs> you know, like uh, if you had tried to sell something like that to me like 20 years ago, I get the context is different and everything, but um, wow, that's bonkers to me anymore i was just trying to uh before i bought uh, Sekiro on steam uh last week or so whenever it was that it came out i was looking on amazon for a di a, a physical copy of the game and what did i see i saw steel book case version and that's all it was was a steel a steel case with no disc <laughs> inside of the disc case <laughs> finding anything like that anymore is like stumbling across the freaking ark of the covenant don't get me wrong, too. Like, I've got more games than I can shake a stick at uh, on Steam. More games that I could uh, hope to complete, let alone play, in my lifetime. And that's uh, staring <laughs> staring at my Steam library is a reminder of mortality. And is like looking into the abyss. I'm afraid it's going to reach out and actually look back at me or do something to me unless I start digging through that back catalog of games that are just collecting dust in there. Uh, but yeah, then I close my Steam window and I go plug Zelda 2 into my NES or something. Uh, it's glorious being uh, disconnected um, from from the internet or or anything else. You know, like it's like being Superman and walking into the Fortress of Solitude, able to meditate and reflect on on myself and and where I fit in 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 creation uh in in, in this physical dimension <laughs> you know you're you're disconnected from the internet you're disconnected from from ads and other shit bombarding you from friends lists and messages and all sorts of other things uh but all that aside um epic for me obviously creates an interesting situation with its revenue split obviously uh understand my perspective obviously i'm making a game i want more money for my game when it's done uh, I'll be able to do more with more money. Uh, realistically, let's just play pretend for a second. Like Epic comes up to me uh, and they offer me $500,000 or something to make Savage, uh, the little uh, puny game that it is, an Epic Store exclusive for six months or a year. Knowing that uh, and knowing that I'd be able to create more games uh, despite the uh, the uh, success or failure of Savage when it launches... Um, that's pretty damn appealing. And to, to be able to pay for rent, for groceries, uh, for, a, for a sustainable living situation for my wife and myself <laughs> and our cat, you know, for the next three to four years or whatever, uh, when, I, when I turn out the next project, which hopefully there will be a next project. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, just knowing that is a pretty appealing offer and, you know, leaving something like that on the table is, uh, can in, in some cases be... I don't know, looked at as irresponsible or something. But uh, 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, like Epic doesn't want games like mine right now. I'm sure down the line they'll uh, they'll open open the platform up and make it a little easier for you to get on there. But uh, right now, and understandably, they want uh, the latest and greatest hype generating machines like Borderlands Three to catch eyeballs and and more importantly, wallets. You know, and don't get me wrong too. Steam has been great for for me for building a community and having access to things like built in forums, messaging. Um, I've been able to push keys out to all of my backers and for people to post uh, screenshots and videos of themselves playing Savage that's fantastic so as far as building a community and, and just awareness for for my game and what I'm doing and everything uh, it's been a big plus and a very convenient one at that that's something that I'd never be able to do on my own now uh, and then as far as a lot of the other uh negative aspects surrounding the epic store does epic spy on your system well apparently no more than steam already does and discord and uh, a variety of other applications that have some sort of social element plugged into them apparently a lot of them already do that and some of the more egregious stuff has already been debunked on uh reddit posts and everything now tencent too uh do i like or trust tencent no <laughs> Uh, and they own a uh, a forty percent stake in uh, in Epic. And now apparently Tim Sweeney has has come out and said that that uh, ten cent does not dictate any sort of policy within Epic. But forty percent is uh, that's nothing to sneeze at. That's kind of a lot of money to have no sway <laughs> over a company like that. So who knows? I don't know. Uh, yeah, but there's yeah there's plenty of annoying crap uh, about Epic. Um. Things like not having reviews. Reviews are pretty handy to, to figure out whether or not you might want to buy a game or not. But you can go to YouTube or anywhere else, uh, Metacritic, etc. Um, or that, the uh, I forget the, the name of the site right now, but the other um, Metacritic-esque uh, exclusively games uh, site. Where all they have is uh, video games and then a, uh, an aggregate score for games and things like that. Or watch somebody on Twitch play a game. There's... Tons of places to get information about uh, about a game before purchase. Uh, of course, it's much more convenient to have it uh, on the platform that you're that you're buying on. Uh, but once upon a time, we didn't have that stuff. I was just talking about playing the NES before, and it was uh, arguably worse. <laughs> Making an informed decision for sure. Uh, you had to pay to make an informed decision in those days. You had to subscribe to Nintendo Power or some or something like that in order to get a to get some sort of a a semblance of how the game actually functions and plays and whether or not it's worth your anywhere from 40 to to 80 to 90 dollars for some of those games back in the day i remember buying battletoads brand new for something like 80 bucks chrono trigger was up there on release too uh, and that was in 90s money <laughs> you know so there i don't know that there was a such thing as the good old days um but yeah steam is kind of just uh um sort of destroyed a lot of that and epic is kind of just the next steam man like it's um i don't really care too much about steam and epic on a personal level uh and i do dislike digital only and i try to get physical games where possible um but epic is just kind of the next steam and it's got and it's got problems as far as uh uh consumer choice goes and uh and things like that but it's um yeah I, there's an illusion of choice i think you've, you've got sometimes gog right now and then steam <laughs> and at least gog though uh makes some sort of attempt at uh making your library look like a collection <laughs> it's got you know the shelf graphic and everything and all your games splayed out nice and pretty uh, but that's all digital, man. That's all. What happens when one of these companies goes under? What happens to your games library? You know, we don't have control over any of this stuff anymore. You can't just uh, pop in, uh, you know, Sekiro or something. You can get it on PS4 and Xbox and everything too. But uh, where possible, I prefer to get my games on PC because uh, you get the higher frame rates and in some cases uh, higher resolution textures and stuff like that. And uh, community fixes for issues <laughs> so none of it's perfect but where do i see indie games fitting into all of this especially uh you know savage <laughs> once the impending release is upon us uh i see games and, and indie games and even uh middle market games and everything going in much more uh niche and boutique 
an independent artist-esque direction, almost like how people cultivate their web comics online. Uh, that's the attitude that I've kind of had while attempting to do any of this while working on my game. You get a streamer or a, a, well, a games creator who decides to go into streaming or they do podcasts or something, uh, and they create uh, other sorts of entertainment surrounding the thing that they're working on. It's almost like you're, you're <laughs> in a manner of speaking, uh, <laughs> you're putting on a bear costume and you're doing a dance outside of your, uh, your business or something. Though it's it's not quite as uh, as well hot. I, well, I say hot, and I'm sitting under uh, two lights right now that are kind of burning me up a little bit. But uh, yeah, you kind of got to put on your carny a little bit, I guess, in order to sell something these days. But I think uh, no matter what has changed, you just got to do a good job. You got to do good work. You got to work your ass off, whether that's marketing or. Uh, ideally the actual product that you're trying to sell right you just got to do a good job um and hopefully hopefully uh somebody will take note and find worth in that <laughs> so, and fingers crossed and of course a lot of this is just uh untested waters for me because i haven't released anything uh in this capacity in the you know the form of a video game before um i've i've been transparent about uh savages development and i've i've kept a like a demo build a pretty robust uh, demo build up to date uh over the years and everything so i'm no stranger to uh having people break <laughs> and play and hopefully enjoy and get a kick out of uh, the thing that i'm trying to produce so yeah i don't know man epic is just the next steam uh and hopefully with indie games like yeah you're, you're just kind of trying to build a brand and an atmosphere around the thing that you're creating you're building a bar that people want to come in and hang out in. Look at Butterscotch Shenanigans. They have a very strong identity surrounding their products and their their games and their their whole atmosphere. They do a podcast and and you generally understand what you're getting with a with a Butterscotch Shenanigans game. If you don't know, they they made games like uh, Crashlands and things like that. And uh, I think they've got a newer one out too. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's it's much more a uh, a game, so to speak, a game about being an independent artist, I think, or constructing a, uh, whether you're in a team or not, constructing an atmosphere and a vibe uh, to your stuff and working hard. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I've really arrived at any sort of conclusion with the Epic Game Store, but those are sort of my thoughts, at least, and where I see things sort of laid out on the table and where I see, where I see things fitting. We don't have a choice as uh, you know, consumers and enjoyers of video games and things. Um, and we haven't for a long time, in my opinion. If you can't physically buy and, and own a piece of entertainment, it's, you're, you're sort of left up to the whims of, of the producers of the content, of the, of the publishers, uh, and the, uh, the people that own the platform that you're, that you're purchasing content through. So, yeah, who knows? Anyway... Thank you very much for sitting through that. <laughs> and, uh, I'll see you again next time. Have a good one.